जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा जय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरीवरदारी
ಮನೋವೀಷ್ಟೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಖ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರ್ಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯೇಷ್ವಭದ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೇ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಋಷಿಯಿಂದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವತಂ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎಂಟರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ವೇರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ರೈಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ behind arjuna is sitting most amazing thing in that past time is uh, krishna is not introduced in the bhagavatam as a great uh, uh, hero who is you know destroying the demons and showing a vishwarupa darshan or something like that huh? although he is the number one hero he likes to be introduced in the bhagavatam as partha sarathi isn't it one who is subordinated by the love of his devotee arjuna unlike any other movie or any other drama generally in the uh, movies they don't introduce hero first they will so chota mata people first and then they so little more bigger people jokers and all those people huh? then they will show and then finally as they go ahead they will show hero in and then when it comes to hero they all they will not introduce hero in an ordinary way 
generally they show from behind and the hero is walking somewhere and you are wondering who is the hero they show show the shoes they show the leg they show the back they show then he will suddenly turn around and take a gun like that he will shoot something so stylishly his hair moving in slow motion isn't it slow motion he will turn around like that. and then they put his name and everybody is giving pee 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 whistles and clap clap hands correct no that's the way they introduce any hero in any movie generally but krishna doesn't get introduced like that in bhagavatam for him the greatest hero is amaze to be a humble servant of his devotees so not only that in the same chapter you will read uh, when uh, ashatama killed those five sons of pandavas and was fleeing away in his chariot so krishna arjuna are chasing after him in the chariot correct no so at that time ashatama out of fear he sends a brahmastra up in the sky because ashatama's horse has stopped they have got very tired huh? and he thought i am going to be captured now so he stopped and then krishna and arjuna are coming behind so they also stopped the chariot why because the brahmastra sent in the sky is going to be deadly for the whole universe it can destroy the whole universe at that time arjuna um is uh, circumambulating krishna three times and then kneeling down with folded palms offering some prayers uh glorifying krishna i'll just show you that prayer all of you can repeat this tomadhy tomadhy purusha sakshat ishvara prakrite parah mayam vidasya chitshaktya kaivalya sthita atmani this is how generally they will read the verses but this kind of verses if you want to imbue it with the mood of arjuna you should recite like this साक्षात्ईश्वर प्रकृते पर मयां युद्ध चिशक्त कैवल्य स्थित आत्मनी you are the original personality of god you expand yourself all over the creations and are transcendental material energy you have cast away you have cast away the effects of the material energy by dint of your spiritual potency you are always situated in eternal bliss and transcendental knowledge sayeva jeeva lokasya maya mohita chetasah विदत्से स्वेन वीर्येण श्रेयो धर्मादि लक्षणम एंड येट दो यू आर बियॉन्ड द परव्यू ऑफ द मेटल एनर्जी यू एग्जीक्यूट द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ लिबरेशन कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय धर्मार्थ काम मोक्ष दोस थिंग फॉर द कंडीशन सोल्स तथायम चात तथायम चावतारस्ते भुवो भारजीर्षया स्वानाम चानन्य भावाना अनुध्यानाय चासकृत दस यू डिसेंड एज एन इंकार्नेशन टू रिमूव द बर्डन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड टू बेनिफिट योर फ्रेंड्स एस्पेशली दोज वो आर you are exclusive devotees and are constantly wrapped in meditation of you meditation upon you kim hidam svet kuto veti deva devana vedmyam deva devana sarvato mukham ayati sarvato mukham ayati teja paramadarunam after three verses of glorifying krishna now he is asking kimeram what is this brahmastra in the sky kuto veti where has it come from oh deva deva oh lord of all lords 
Na vednyaham. I don't know. He's saying. So in this way he's saying, where does it come from? I don't understand it. How is it that this dangerous effulgence is spreading all around? Oh Lord of Lords, please tell me. And then comes Bhagavan Uvacha, correct? No? Why, why I told you this? Imagine there's a Brahma star lady in the sky. Huh? Will you be circumambulating Krishna three times and offering three prayers? And the two prayers of glorification. Is it not true? And after that he is asking the actual question about the Brahmastra. So, two things we understand from this episode which we read now. One is Lord is teaching by his personal example that devotee means, uh, a devotee should be constantly in rapt, loving attraction for the Lord and exchanging love with the Lord. And how does the Lord do it? He doesn't tell Arjuna that you have to exchange love with me. He himself shows love by becoming his charioteer. Similarly, if you are senior devotees, you are third year, final year, passed out devotees, uh, you should live in a certain state of disposition of consciousness where you are in the mood of a humble servant like Krishna. Because how do the two Krishna and Arjuna, who is superior? Krishna is superior, correct? No? So if you are senior, then you are supposed to uh, keep your consciousness in such a way that the juniors feel affection for you. Hmm. Uh, like the Arjuna is the younger one, Krishna is a superior one, but the superior one is bending down. Huh? In Tamil, there is a saying, Siriyor Sayyum Siripade Yellam Periyor Ayan Purupad Kadane. What is the meaning of that? If small ones commit mistake, the bigger one should forgive. That's the meaning of that. Huh? So, Krishna is the bigger one and Arjuna is the smaller one, but the bigger one becomes the servant of the smaller one. Huh? Awakening, affection for the. Uh, affect, uh, naturally, that awakens affection in the heart of. Arjuna. Like Prabhupada is a bigger one and his uh, hippie disciples are smaller one when Prabhupada went to America. So Prabhupada is cooking for them, feeding them prasad, washing their plates, cleaning their room and everything. And he didn't ask any service from hippies. So what happens over a period of time? The hippies felt affection for him hmm. because of the sacrifices made by the bigger one. Huh? So when they see the sacrifices, hearts are touched and they get awakened and they cry tears. <coughs> you are doing so much for us, we have not done anything for you. Huh? And that is the time <clears throat> when the younger ones wanted to render service for Prabhupada, correct? And not only that, now Krishna is dealing with Arjuna in a manner that evokes affection in the heart of? Heart of? Huh? You are not very clear huh, about it. You don't understand? Krishna behaves in such a way that it evokes affection in the heart of? Yeah. So, when Arjuna felt that affection, naturally affection is blended with respect also uh, for the bigger one. Therefore, when he saw the Brahmastra, he didn't spring into action. He knew that I can't manage it. It is beyond me. So he circumambulated Krishna three times, kneeled down, folded his palms, offered three prayers of glorification. This is called as respect before request. Respect before he requested Krishna to enlighten him what this Brahmastra is and what is my course of action. Huh? But before making that request, he showed huh? respect. Respect before request. That means the younger one should have respect for the superior and the superior one should have affection for the younger one. Huh? And this is a very powerful combination we see in this first canto of seventh chapter. Huh? Then in that place, something magical happens. Miracle happens. What is that miracle? Um, the exchange of love between the bigger one and the smaller one. Uh, uh, why I am saying the principle of bigger one, smaller one? I can say Krishna and Arjuna. Huh? Why am I specifically saying bigger one, smaller one? Because this principle is applicable universally. Huh? Like the parents and the children. If the parents are sacrificing, then the children are respectful. Huh? Similarly, the senior devotees are sacrificing and affectionate, then the younger ones have respect for them and adore their, their association. And they want to do something for them in return. This is a universal principle. Same between husband and wife. In India, husbands were superior, wife was inferior. Shastras say that there should be one leader only in a family. You can't have you know, both husband and wife equally leaders. But wife can be leader from a platform of love. Husband is leader from platform of tattva, correct? No? 
one is superior one is inferior so the husband uh, is like a captain of the boat he leads the family but he is so affectionate and um, so uh, kind to the family members that they don't mind being his servant mm. wife and children that is indian philosophy but over a period of time because husbands lost their character they became arrogant and they became em- devoid of knowledge of the shastra huh? they started uh, drinking smoking and dominating women and they didn't protect women and the result is women had to go for a job to protect their family and they lost their respect for the man and the and the result is the family is got divorced and things like that happen in india uh, so husband uh, can get respect uh, from the wife provided he plays his role properly correct right, no and his role how does he play properly by being you know humble and grateful and affectionate and kind although he is actually great uh-huh. the bigger one has to have those character characteristics so now uh in a, in our scenario why scenario how is that possible the grown up devotees especially the senior ones are supposed to uh, be very very krishna krishna conscious huh? so one of the first aspects of being very krishna conscious is extremely sharp and alert and attentive in hearing that's why i am asking question in between why the sound is not coming loud because some of your minds are diffused in different places khat kar ke answer doesn't come because what did he ask now they're wondering huh? otherwise if you hear i ask who is the younger one is arjuna who is the bigger one krishna how did krishna deal with arjuna humble huh? so immediately you can say that and i am not i am not blaming you for this it is problem with all of us one time his grace uh, burijan prabhu came to one temple he was supposed to give bhagavatam class he read the translation um, and he you know began the purport and then he said i know very well now your minds are going to switch off he said then when i read the purport all of you will go to the different zones do all plan making everything and after you finish the purport and when i start the class then you will come back therefore i am not going to read the purport he said then we wonder then how will you speak the class i am going to read line by line and i lost some questions in between which means you mentally be prepared no? because i am not going to allow your attention to go here and there and same thing is followed by his holiness giriraj maharaj also correct no he will not read the full purport he will read one or two lines and explain a little bit and then he'll go to the next thing why he knows very well the then tendency of conditioned souls is to allow the mind to wander and not bring it to the act activity in hand right now and this is the greatest abhishap i can tell you greatest curse because uh, because of this what happens we are again put back into moha huh? because yagnatpa na punar moham evam nyasesi pandava in a so in that verse he says punar moha means what again we are put into moha huh? we were in moha we were brought out by sound vibration and then we became krishna conscious we again become covered over huh? just like you keep a you cut an apple and keep it on the table it becomes oxidized huh? after some time you see that you keep a knife on the table for a week you don't use it it becomes rusted you will see that our consciousness also if you don't keep it fresh huh? um, fresh and enthusiastic and very alert and very attentive hearing the sound vibration very nicely then eventually you will not be a very enthusiastic devotee yeah i can show you both examples you will see devotees after 20 years 25 years also they are very dull as if they are half dead hmm? there are devotees like that and there are devotees who are very fresh yeah? not only after 20 30 years you can see sankarshan jadikari prabhu right how many years 55 years now 55 years he is practicing he is like a young boy <laughs> he is jumping with enthusiasm so much of eagerness for uh, you know everything in krishna consciousness because he is very alert in hearing sound vibration so bringing your mind to the present hearing very attentively contemplating on what is heard and then processing it to the mind and absorbing our mind in that this is what gives you ecstasy and if you want ecstasy this is what you should do if you don't this is called as shavanam means hear mananam means uh, recollect what you heard at the end of the class if i ask you what i spoke today you should be able to say cut 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 point 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 things you said probably without even making notes you can say that actually it is possible provided you heard 
attentively. Then you can say like that. Basically, our mind can work in a very organized way. You can take the concept, examples, concept, example, concept, and go on. And then after the class, you just remember only the examples. And concepts will automatically come out huh, from the example. So in this way, by hearing very attentively and recollecting, hmm, and uh, not only Shavana uh, and uh, Mananam, huh, the Nidityasana is the third step, which is a very, very important step. Uh, the Nidityasana actually means your knowledge turns into conviction. Hmm? Your knowledge uh, uh, turns into realization and conviction. That's the most important step. And how does that happen? After hearing the class, you are walking in the road, but you are thinking about what you heard today and its relevance to your personal life. Hmm? And it relevance to the lives of the people in the world around. Hmm? And uh, that's called as personal application and preaching application. And theological application means, like for example, uh, something is happening in the world now, Hamas and uh, Israel are fighting. So you can give a Shastric perspective to that, the theological application. Correct, no? So in the same manner, Prabhupada Bill Clinton, Prabhupada gave a comment about him because based on Shastra he gave, <laughs> correct? No? So similarly, TV, uh, you know, uh, TV is uh, ruining the lives of people. Somebody may say, where does it say in Bhagavad Gita, you know, <coughs> Na Pashyatam Duradarshanam. Huh? Anywhere in Gita you have a shloka like that, don't watch TV, Duradarshan. Doesn't say that. But you can take Jayato Vishayan Pumsaha, Sangas Teju Pajayate, Sangat Sanjayate. So based on the principle, you can say the TV is bad. Hmm? Because the principles are given in Shastra. And then you can apply it in the day-to-day -day circumstance. That is theological application, isn't it? So when you are able to do all these things, then comes the faith and conviction, which is Nididhyasana. Huh? So when faith and conviction arises, then with faith you read the Prabhupada's purports, then you can easily understand Prabhupada's mood and mission. Huh? When there is faith and conviction, then mood and mission becomes very easy. Huh? Then uh, Shastra Chakshu comes uh, subsequently. Then you take responsibility for uh, learning and reading more and more uh, by that. Then you get the authority to present the philosophy in a very proper manner. Uh, all these things, these are 12 aims of Shastric study where we uh, learned these things. So the point is, uh, many a times we become covered over, whether you are a bigger devotee or a smaller devotee, when we are covered over, then our material qualities will come. In Vrindavan, one day when uh, Trinavarta came and took away Krishna up in the sky, <clears throat> at that time he created a dust cloud, correct, no? Like that he created. And then all the gopis' eyes, uh, uh, you know, got the dust of sand. Huh? And then uh, all the gopis started crying. And uh, I mean, Yashoda was crying that Krishna is missing, correct, no? And then the gopis also, they were asking one another, Hey, Yashoda, why did you leave Krishna here and go away? Huh? You should not have done that. And somebody else told the gopi, you know, but what about you? You could have picked up Krishna. Huh? She went to the kitchen, you could have picked up. Everybody was asking one another, why you didn't take care, why you didn't take care. Huh? Similarly, when our uh, dust uh, comes in our eyes, there is a communal discord. Huh? Communal discord means there is a clash between the devotees. Huh? You, know, you blame him and he blames him and he blames him and everybody is blaming everybody else. Huh? And also everybody's eyes are paining also and the dust is coming and one cannot see properly. One's vision is impaired, one's ecstasy is lost and one is crying because one has lost Krishna. But on the other hand, when uh, Krishna comes back crashing down Trinavarta, correct, no? When everybody saw Krishna, then then no more dust in the eyes. Eh? They obtained Krishna back. Nanda Baba was happy, Yashoda was happy and all the gopis were happy. So, in all our communities, whether it is congregation or brahmacharis or boys, eh? If we are not attentive in our sound vibration hearing, even if you hear only for a short time, huh? you, you are not getting too much time to study a lot, huh? Prabhupada books and uh, lectures and that. Whatever you are reading, hearing, you, even if you hear, I can tell you my, honestly my personal experience, sometimes in reading Prabhupada books, I will read only three, four lines. Huh? And that will keep ringing all day in the mind. Huh? Prabhupada said this, huh? you know, and Prabhupada lived this. And my spiritual master is also living this, what Prabhupada is saying. So many other wonderful Vaishnavas are showing example for this. So the thoughts keep rising in the mind, contemplating on what is heard. So I may hear a little, but because of contemplating, uh, the mind is surrounding that uh, spiritual sound vibration. Hmm? Then I can withdraw myself from the external stimuli, although I may travel here, travel there, and so many other materialistic problems they bring also. Management problems, so many things they bring. Huh? 
but if our mind is hooked to spiritual contemplation the management issues will not affect our mind uh, it will remain aloof like morning i was telling you like butter i was telling you uh, so the nididhyasana is very very important but problem is before you go to nididhyasana the first step only we fail we don't hear uh, shravanam we don't do well because the mind is uh, scattered all over everywhere huh? so therefore we have to withdraw that scattered mind like a magnifying glass withdrawing all the diffused light and then focusing at a focal point then only you burn a paper or cotton correct no then then because they are because the focal point huh? that is the focal point is the sound vibration hearing attentive hearing whether it is japa whether it is uh, bhagavatam huh? in this way when we hear attentively because the knowledge is already Uh, registered in our mind we are able to recollect it manana we are able to nididhyasana hmm? and then what you do patanam hmm? patanam means you memorize the shlokas huh? especially what arjuna is telling what krishna is telling hmm? so uh, like for example uh, like arjuna is telling katam bhishma maham sankhe dronam cha madhusudhana isho bhi pratiyotsyami pujar havari sudhana Hey Krishna, you are telling me to kill Bhishma and Drona and all such great personalities. You know, you are, uh, you know, will you become, you know, your Sandipani Sudan or, uh, you know, or you will become any uh, uh, any other Sudan? Eh? Uh, which means, will you kill uh, your uh, greater uh, elders? Huh? And you are asking me to kill this guy, huh? and you are asking me to. So he is uh, Arjuna is asking question to Krishna. that how i can't even have verbal abuse with such people and i have to fight with them in the battle so uh, then immediately krishna arjuna comes in the picture that dialogue comes in the picture and mind is completely absorbed in that thought huh? of that so shastras have to be done with affection with sincerity with seriousness with rapt attention and taking the messages shastra as absolute truth solemn truth huh? if you are going to take the shastric statements lightly we think may be true may not be true you'll never benefit from it simply you're wasting your time here huh? if shastric truths are taken as solemn truth their veda vakya can never be false huh? and uh, it's coming down in the disciplic succession right from that krishna gives to brahma huh? so taking the matter seriously hmm? this also comes in bhagavata taking the matter seriously huh? uh, that was famous was shrinvata shraddaya anityam grinatascha shvateshitam grinata means taking the matter of matter talk talk in bhagavatam very seriously take it seriously hear attentively contemplate on it awaken realization and uh, solidify it and make it your own asset when you have it then you can walk the life of a devotee what is the substance of a voice center the substance of the voice center is the, the residents of the center who are staying there should feel krishna consciousness if every individual is feeling that bhakti bhava then they have some commodity which they can distribute to the new people so the bhakti shakti resides in the individual heart of every devotee and when they come together in, uh, with mutual good relationship like i told you now bigger one smaller one i told you then the preeti lakshanam happens so do you agree krishna and arjuna preeti lakshanam is happening is happening or not <coughs> happening because both are conducting themselves properly correct no <coughs> then the preeti lakshana happens so then uh, with these two things then the third one is a third thing only it is not as important as the first two the third one is dakshata ha huh? dakshata means your skill your management skill your organizational skill your strategy planning skill that is third thing but sometimes the third thing becomes so important that we neglect the first two ha huh? you know you ignore the uh, preeti lakshan and you ignore the bhakti shakti then you have no substance to distribute correct now for example i ask you please bring me a bislari bottle quickly and somebody comes and gives me empty bislari bottle probably you want a bislari bottle it's here <laughs> will you be happy it is true that i asked a bislari bottle but what did i intend water. ah water because that's the substance correct na no? similarly people say we have started center here we have started center there somebody has built a big temple also the people are doing is only bislari bottle only no water inside na no? because the substance is you know the su- most important that is what is going to quench my thirst not the bottle huh? but if we bite it will you will become more thirsty also you know you need the water to drink huh? so management will eat up our head huh? on the other hand in substance that will give juice to our relationship so first uh, i myself experience bhakti shakti you are feeling bhakti shakti is feeling bhakti shakti we all are coming together we dance together sing together we take prasad together 
we discuss philosophy together and then we are experiencing some bhakti bhava where all re- mutual respect love and trust is built over a period of time and then let, we think let us call the boys from outside let us also give them the taste of this eh? let them also experience this joy that we are experiencing that is ideal once is the shaman poor selling sometimes <laughs> our life becomes so frustrating because of too much load of work and everything so one brahmachari in bombay he preached uh, and called one group of uh, five students came from one college he had told them to come in the weekend he the brahmachari saw them coming at the gate and he was running and hiding somewhere huh? shaman was why are you hiding prabhu ji i am already burnt out i didn't get good sleep <laughs> so much i work today then he asked then uh, who called these boys i only called them <laughs> <laughs> he called them but now he is i mean he is too tired now he didn't get uh, sleep at night you know he didn't get time to study bhagavatam you know and his rounds are remaining so shaman pur said if you go and preach people will come correct no? but we should have enough substance enough reserve with us that we can very uh, gladly welcome them and make them sit and make them feel comfortable and this is one of the reasons why prophet gave more attention to a few disciples only Huh? why they put a bar on you cannot meet prabhupad why they put the break huh? because if you have few people on whom you give attention then they become very enriched in consciousness like myself for example i have a group called bliss group there are about 25 leaders like revati pat prabhu premanand prabhu acharya prabhu people like that i meet them two two hours every month other than that i meet them personally also hmm? then i have another group called brinda group there i have about uh, 70 brahmacharis 60 brahmacharis in that also i have a accountability system in you know, a small small groups are there the groups uh, take care of themselves but i only give them two hours in a month huh? the same manner in congregation i have made a slate group you know different different groups of leaders i only meet the leaders if any newcomer comes and catches me of course i write emails replies but if they want extended counseling from me i will never do that if somebody says prabhu i want you a couple of hours to talk to you I'll say, who is your counselor? First question I'll ask you. Huh? Go to your counselor. I can help you, but if you want help from me because your counselor is not able to help you, write a long letter, eight page, ten page. Also, I don't mind. But I cannot sit with you for two, three hours. Hmm? That I only give for those who are in my inner circle of leaders, because beyond that we have a human uh, limitation. Hmm? Same manner, the brahmacharis are coming here. They should uh, be in touch with the. mentors and very senior people and then they in turn give attention to the younger ones and the caring and counseling should be done very carefully and then taking in the substance of spiritual and krishna consciousness that's very very important in, and it may not be done although we say periodically daily reading some uh, centers have voice centers for example daily 20 minutes reading huh? prabhupad books you know in this way systematically people are reading which is also good but in case your lifestyle is not suitable for that then one should take bulk insight huh? like a uh, morning i told you about the example of camel huh? take a lot of water and then you can spend it uh, during the desert days huh? the next uh, i do the same also i purposefully don't go by flight i only book uh, like azad in the express although the uh, train is a pathetic train i will travel in that only <laughs> you know you know i i will uh, sit at 630 here whole day next day in train third day morning i will reach people told me prabhu why do, you are a very senior devotee will book a flight ticket for you i said please book me in that two sleeper coach uh, uh, this thing only sleeper only huh? i go in that because you get fresh air also sometimes sit in the berth and peacefully open bhagavatam and study huh? that is only my personal time once i go to any temple people will pounce upon me huh? i cannot i can't eat also prasad proper when i am while eating prasad also there will be five six people around huh? talking always but when i am travelling that's the time i make my time for reading bhagavatam i will read at a stretch 20 hours 15 hours 20 hours i cut short my sleep i read more and that is the time i can contemplate also because in a tension mood nobody can contemplate so when you are swallowing in and then afterwards once i swallowed in then i can keep on contemplating because i swallowed a lot and i did that for 2 years in govardhan eco village also correct now every day i studied 3 hours in the morning i attended the class after 3 hours i revised the class how many hours 6 hours a day and i did for 2 years no? except the weekends weekends i came here so i took in a lot and after taking in a lot then you have time for while going coming is to cause keep uh, you know vibrating in the mind and the knowledge that you heard keeps vibrating not only i am just uh, contemplating i am also speaking in a day i speak 6 to 8 hours huh? 
most of my days if you see my calendar so i am because i am able to process it that's why learning and explaining is important and if you only learn you'll forget it it evaporates it doesn't stick on the mind but if you hear contemplate and repeat akhyatani apaditani like that he says by learning and repeating that actually solidifies your understanding now let's go to the questions now actually i try to highlight this but highlighter is giving only one color i want to highlight it in five six colors yeah. you know when I, when, I, when i put like this you know then it says you if i put like this highlight colors come so only one color is coming where are other colors there are no other colors it's not giving other colors. so therefore i couldn't highlight it i okay, have to close it this one no no How to close it? Yeah, close here, eh? Black, eh? This color, this one. Okay, no problem. Now let us proceed. This how to make this fellow go away? So, here, this one. Eh? Okay, ah, yeah, please read it. That's fine. I feel very disturbed in chanting and unable to chant when I have some heated arguments with some devotee. thoughts don't go away even if we beg for forgiveness sometimes it comes in chanting even the next day also how to clear the mind in such situations prabhu ji yeah um therefore uh, in dealing with the devotees etiquettes are very important like arjuna is showing etiquette i told you ha huh? etiquettes and behavior will take care that you don't hurt others you don't hurt yourself both that means you allow others to have their right and you allow yourself to have your right that's called assertive behavior huh? so the why we should not hurt ourselves because hurting other others and yourself with speech is going to affect your chanting the you are honestly you are revealed it huh? so therefore once it has happened such thoughts are arising all of us have some occasion where we clashed with some devotee and that causes irritation in the mind and bad thoughts in the mind huh? so what we can think in this world uh, all living entities are drunken in the three gunas huh? will you take the words of a drunken man seriously no. similarly sometimes some other devotees may be unreasonable in fighting with you but you but you don't take them their words seriously huh? uh, and also sometimes you may be drunken also huh? so you may be unreasonable also sometimes because we are also not at pure or two drunken people come together they can, can they speak cogently <laughs> <laughs> they are going to blah blah. One fellow says blah blah. He says part part. He says they are saying something else. <laughs> they are so therefore don't take these exchanges in the condition stage too seriously. <laughs> Because once we come out of the drunken stage, then you see that you understand. You get sanity. Correct now. So one need not take it very seriously. That's one thing. Another thing, you know, uh, one should consider others ignorant rather than consider others envious. <laughs> because if you think they are ignorant you will feel sympathy if you think they are envious you will feel revenge no? so uh, they may not be envious of you they may be ignorant the way they are speaking uh, most often that's the case so devotees generally don't have any big revengeful attitude towards one another although they may sometimes show some anger so think of them that they are ignorant they don't know the full picture they know half picture and they are treating me like this i think it's my own karma is coming back now from the previous life of why to blame uh, the other person we throw a ball on the wall it comes to my hand back so i did something which is coming back on me and that devotee is just a postman who is delivering my goods so think like this and then calm your mind ha huh? yeah, next question in our college we have exams and other exam related things for almost a month and during this time student devotees have alternate morning program option like japa compulsory but class and aarti are optional alternate days but some devotee needs more time to study and some have work with college groups late nights online so they may not be able to attend morning program next day as they went late night and as exams go month long some devotees really have a tough time and end up missing almost 75% of the month's morning program and when the exam ends it takes them at least a week to again come back on track that too with difficulty can you please suggest what kinds of policy or plans we can have in such situations note some student devotees are very good in planning and they don't have this problem but some have yeah 
See, the last line is very important. Correct. <laughs> 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 you know, see, Satoguna means you start from the beginning of the semester, correct? No? You know, like, uh, like one example I'll tell you. I went to one voice. See, the, I asked what time you guys come from the college. They come back at 5. Huh? But they are sleeping at 11.30. Then I asked uh, why. Then I found between 5 to 9, these fellows are not doing anything constructive. Uh -huh. They go here, go there, chat here, chat there, sitting with the YouTube, you know sitting with uh, some website, you know, talking to people, friends, and here and there. Because they think actual study means seriously study, I'll start after nine, they're thinking. So then they eat their dinner and everything, and then sit with the books and everything at nine, and assignments they do, it becomes 11.30. I told them, what you do between nine to 11.30? You do between five to 7.30. Five to nine, you have time. You have time to study also, do assignment also. You just have to shift it. Huh? And one should not waste a single moment. You should spend your time like spending gold coins. Huh? One has to be very alert and attentive. So in case mind is little fun-loving, you know, you come back from the college, you know, mind doesn't want to immediately get into study or something like that. You take some rest because morning, you know, you rose very early in the morning, you may be a little tired, you want to relax your body. You don't have to sleep, but you can take rest. Huh? Give some rest to the body, stretch your hands, you know. Yeah. Relax, uh, like we do Shavasana type of thing we do, isn't it? Uh, if you want to take a bath, you take a bath. Even if you want to spend some time in leisure, half an hour you can spend, not a problem, 5 to 5.30. But spending 5 to 9, not doing anything, simply utter foolishness it is, isn't it? Actually, relaxing a little bit is not a problem. Even I also do that. Sometimes when I when I feel there are too many burdensome things came, I do go to the terrace. I chant one, one or two extra rounds. Uh, just walk in the sun. You know, actually, more you come closer to nature, you know, nature is like a mother. A child in mother's lap feels very comfortable, no? Like that when you go in the grass, or when you access the sun, or you go to the terrace where you get fresh air, huh? immediately you feel stress is relieved. Huh? You feel very, very calm. Do something like that half an hour, and then come back and, you know, wash your hands, legs, take some snacks, and then sit with books. Huh? Then if you daily study, you know, from the beginning of the semester, you won't face this predicament, what you are saying. But let us assume that you didn't do that. Now in one full month exams that are coming one after another and you are very much in tension, you are, uh, you are not able to attend the morning program. So, okay, you only chant in the morning. No? no need to attend the morning program at all in the morning. All the mornings you can skip during that entire month and chant only the holy name. But in the evening you can do Gaurarati. Huh? Like for example, between 7 to... Anyway, you are awake in the evening. You are not sleeping at 7. So, 7 to 7.30, you can do Gaurarati. Because you couldn't attend the Mangalarati. Instead, you can do Gaurarati. In case, some of you, I heard that you are in projects you are doing where you have to work with some boys and the boys are calling you for late night meetings. You know? And some of you have to attend some courses and classes between 10 to 12 also. So, if you're sleeping at 12, don't get up before 6. 6 hours you take proper rest. There's no problem. Huh? Because if you if you don't sleep properly, you will become angry. And that is why the angry interactions take place. <laughs> you know, you know what, whatever time you sleep, you have to sleep at least 6 hours full. Otherwise, you know, head will get heated up. Huh? So, uh, if you sleep at 12, get up at 6. And then just chant your rounds. Take bath and just chant your round. And in the evening, you can do Gaurarati. Hmm? Half an hour. And Gaurarati, you can blissfully chant and dance because you are not in tension in the evening. Morning, you are in tension. Correct, no? Uh, and don't necessarily go at 12. Try to sleep early. Huh? Isn't it? Now, Prabhuji has made a new policy. Now, stop, stop Bangalarati for the whole year. Huh? Every day, only Gaurarati. Don't come up with a new, new philosophy. Huh? <laughs> this is called as Apad Dharma. What Dharma? Apad Dharma means what? Emergency, Emergency Dharma. Huh? That, why you have to do Gaurarati in the evening? Because unless you chant and dance and glorify the Lord, you are not going to be happy. Your happiness comes from there. If somebody says, I will not eat any food, I will only study, you know, you won't be able to study. Because without eating the food, the body will be tired. Huh? Similarly, without feeding the soul, you are not going to be happy. Hmm? So, that kind of modification you can do. But most important thing is the chanting only. Even during the examinations, keep the chanting and then Aarti can be moved to the evening. Correct, Prabhu? Yeah, next. Many times when we are in the role of in-charge, we try to delegate services to the devotees in our department, but many times they deny to do it. 
If we ourselves are busy and they are not ready to do service after requesting multiple times, it's very hard to control frustration. So how to react in that situation as we need to train them also for handling department, but they are not ready to do it. Yeah. Actually, they will only be ready to do it if they feel some gratitude, some affection, some respect. So we have to find out why that has not arisen. Even after uh, the younger ones, has got, they have got so much of uh, care from the mentors when they were in first year in the college. And after the Udkars, they have come here and joined here. They are getting nice prasad, they are getting good accommodation. They have been saved from deadly habits like drinking, smoking, drugs and illicit sex and all that. So many boys are burning, their minds and bodies are burning outside, correct? No? Otherwise, why are they committing suicide? No? You all have been saved from that. So sometimes uh, Raspati Prabhu uh, or Mukut Prabhu, both of them can speak about you know, what gifts we have received and how we should be grateful. Um, you can even play a lecture of His Holiness Ranath Maharaj on gratitude. You know, he yeah, a humble and grateful heart. There is a beautiful lecture. Mm-hmm. That. So, some of us are born in families where we are naturally gra- grateful. Huh? Because that comes from the family. Maharaj is an epitome of great- gratefulness. To everybody practically, even if a driver drives him Uber or Ola, Maharaj will tell him thank you <laughs> for dropping somewhere. <laughs> he will say, because he feels gratitude to everybody who comes in his life. <laughs> but if we are not so cultured, uh, coming from a very cultured family, we take all service and we don't feel any gratitude. <laughs> Some people are like that, selfish fellows. <laughs> you know, such selfish attitude we had because upbringing was very bad. <laughs> then uh, we have to hear from Maharaj and then borrow some of those uh, you know, j- uh, droplets of the juice of gratitude. Huh? So when they feel gratitude, they will cry for the seniors. Prabhu, you tell me, whatever you say I will do, even though uh, I have to study for the paper and everything, I will try my best to do as much as I can. That is the right attitude. Huh? They should have. So, and uh, other than the exam time, the other times also, uh, the before offering services to all the devotees, there should be a talk about the glory of service. Service is so glorious that Krishna even wants to become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to become a devotee, to do service and experience the joy of service. One time, Zolan Ranath Maharaj and uh, Yatra Gaurang Prabhu had the same complaint. Maharaj, nobody comes to serve Prasad. If you can put a one word in the mic, the devotee should help in Prasad. Maharaj said, such an important topic it is. He gave one full lecture for two hours on importance of Seva Bhav. You know? And uh, that was actually in the morning time, 11 to 1. One o'clock Prasad started, 800 people were in queue. Huh? And they all wanted to serve Prasad. <laughs> then Gaurampu asked, hey, if all of you stand in the queue, then who is going to eat? <laughs> and then no one to sit and eat. Huh? He had to literally force many people, catch them by their shoulder and push them and say, you sit down first. Huh? Like that. Because after hearing lecture, everybody got awakened that now, my Lord, we have not been having Seva Bhav, then we cannot go back to Godhead. Huh? So they understood that. Generally, it's a tendency of Vaishnavas. If a lecture is on Vaishnava Aparad, they will say, I will never do Aparad in my life, you know. And after three days, they will do. <laughs> so, in this way, service Seva Bhav is very important. Huh? Some talk can be there. And I would request the two brahmacharis, you know, they should help the seniors to get help from the juniors huh? by giving a talk on the importance of service attitude. And the seniors need not have to push the juniors to do things. It's a very shameful thing. Hmm. And if need be, then the brahmacharis can become directly involved in alerting services and making sure it happens. When 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 the senior boys are not able to handle the younger ones are not doing, then the senior ones have to come. And besides that, you can see why the service is difficult. What is the difficulty? Do they need any help? Huh? All that has to be found out. Next one. It becomes very difficult to maintain devotional behavior with the devotees who are with, uh, with us in managerial services. Yeah. Even uh, gopis complained about Brahma, isn't it? Yes. Uh, they said that this fellow has created us eyelids which keep blinking and we can't see Krishna continuously. Huh? They said the purpose says, you know, Br- Brahmaji is the first manager and gopis are the best devotees. Still they have a clash. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> so that is, so if you are getting clash, it's very authorized, don't worry. Huh? Yeah. Clashes will be there. Because we are in which world now? We are in material world. So, we are in material world, but you should try to make this voice a spiritual abode. The more you spiritualize your center, then the clashes will become reduced. You can minimize it. 
Just like a lotus is in the middle of Kichan, but lotus doesn't get affected by Kichan. Similarly, we can be in the middle of material world, but you have to create a spiritual, there has to be spiritual vibration. So what is spiritual vibration? Everybody sh- should feel that this center is being conducted by Shumit Radharani's, you know, internal potency. She is conducting it. Huh? And all of us uh, are part and parcel of Krishna. And therefore, we should have mutual respect for each other. And service is a great privilege. Ascending service and descending mercy. If I do service, I'll get mercy. And also, I should not uh, deal with any living entity, any devotee improperly because Krishna will become angry with me. Lord Kapila says in 3.29.28, you will see, he says that, uh, you know, he says, from that you will see gradation of living entities he gives. So finally he says, if you respect the deities but not respect devotees, it's like pouring uh, ghee in ashes, he's saying. Your bhakti is useless, he says. So you have to understand how much the Lord loves his devotees. Then we will not hurt each other. Hmm? Next. How can we subdue the old bad habits that still creep into our daily sadhana? Uh, also, this managerial thing, uh, uh, if you are in managerial role, you have to hear the email lectures. Huh? In email lectures, there are email stands for anybody knows. Efficient management and inspiring leadership. Huh? E-M-A-I-L. 32 sessions are there. So, those are especially for the royal group. If you hear those lectures, definitely you will learn the art of dealing with people without hurting one another. And then regarding the old habits, yeah, they will take time. I would suggest you to hear one lecture, which I had spoken in CYP recently. It's called as Overcoming Previous Conditionings. Correct, Shwajibu? Overcoming Previous Conditionings. It's a very important lecture. It is there on the YouTube. You will find it. Next. Many times I have seen that while making organization bigger and bringing more new devotees, we generally forget about the existing ones and we don't see much about their requirement as we think they are already in. Our focus gets majorly diverted to bringing more people and not on quality and quantity of already connected devotees. So my question was that, should we focus more on bringing new devotees or on cultivating existing devotees more nicely? And if we should do both, Please tell us how, as it goes really hard to see from management side to focus on both aspects. Yeah. See, uh, once when I was in the garden with my friends, we climbed up the tree and we got the big, big gooseberries. You know, big gooseberries? The green one. Huh? So we're putting in a sack. So I told my friends, don't worry. <clears throat> if you shake it, you can get more. Huh? So shake it and then get more, get more. Finally, I told them to stick, to stitch the goni. You know, so we stitched the goni and only one hole we kept. And we started getting more and more and pushing and we were wondering how, as many you push, it keeps going inside. <laughs> then we found at the bottom, one one was coming out. <laughs> you push one and the top and one goes out from the bottom. Similarly, you bring new devotees and old ones are going out. <laughs> you will see that. It happens sometimes. Huh? And you don't know why the older ones are going out because they get frustrated sometimes inside. And they give some glib excuses. Prabhuji, my parents are asking me to go out. Or Prabhuji, you know, my mind is troubling or, or I have to study for some competitive exam or whatever, they will go out one by one and then you bring in you. So, some Viscount temples say that we have 10 brahmacharis. After 10 years also, only 10 brahmacharis. Why? Because many, it's not that many didn't join. Many joined but people also keep leaving, leaving. leaving. You keep pushing one inside, one is going out. Huh? So, therefore, to avoid this scenario, you know, we have to do a, devote time for the care of the Inmates also. For example, you all go for a couple of yatras in a year with the two brahmacharis. They take you, you know. And also there has to be, actually you cannot allow your mind to become irritated or frustrated and then you also preach and bring more people. That's not possible. Yeah. Actually, if you are in comfort zone, you are lazy. Comfort comfort zone is coffin, it is said. You are in coffin. You are dead only. Huh? And if you are in panic zone, you are irritated. You are wild, you are angry, you lost the balance uh, of your head. So you are not going to preach effectively. Because uh, my Guru Maharaj used to say, when I asked him, Maharaj, I always ask Gopaksha Paramji, Gopaksha Maharaj, Paramji, Lokanath Maharaj, what they want from the disciples. So I want to know from you, what do you expect uh, from your disciples? He told me, be happy, he said. Yes, Maharaj, I'm already happy, what more? Nothing, just be happy, that's all, he said. I said, Maharaj, just by being happy, what will happen? He said, uh, happy devotee attracts people, he said. Huh? So he said, you have to be, you are a big manager, you are in a very senior position. If you are happy, many other leaders 
you know, down the line, they will become happy. And then he said, yeah, happy, happy devotee preaches by his happiness. Mm -hmm. He said. So, the inmates have to be very happy. If you are happy, then only new boys will be attracted to come here. If you get uh, frustrated, then you will start criticizing even Iskon, you will start criticizing Prabhupada, you will criticize one another. Then over a period of time, you lose juice. Mm -hmm. So, without the juice, we cannot preach. So, how to do, how to avoid that uh, frustration and everything. So, I would suggest that don't go overboard in preaching. Uh, do like we do DYS, we do Sankal, we do Surti, we do Udkarsh. This is going and then we do the weekly program. Uh, if you're following up a boy three times, you call him for the weekly program. If he doesn't come, drop him. Uh, don't follow beyond that. But sometimes we follow up five times, ten times, we chase after them, we personally go and uh, that's one thing. Another thing, don't go in the morning Japa time to call boys. Uh, we do that generally because we think that if the boys come, they can also attend morning program. We go with the bike to bring them. But then what happens? Your Japa gets affected. Uh, you only chant one hour and then you go to call the boys. Then one hour remains in the evening, the quality gets spoiled. So you, you can only call them on phone and tell them that, you know, please come for the morning program. It's very nice if you can come. And if they don't come, it's all right. And one more thing we can do for the junior boys, instead of keeping a morning program, we can keep a Evening program, like we do in the, you know, AIT college, we did that. Very new boys, post DYS, you know, or post Sankal. If you want to call the boys, evening they happily come because they sleep late night. So the evening you give them the taste and boost their spiritual strength, then they will come in the morning afterwards. Like that you can do. So you don't have to hurt your morning program, right? No? Like that you can do. And another thing, as I told you, uh, uh, inmates care actually means the Shravanam Kirtanam is the most important thing. Huh? You know, taking sections of Bhagavatam, there should be study circle conducted by your two senior brahmacharis, you know, and then you should soak your consciousness in those sections of Bhagavatam, not uh, during the exam time, after the exams. Huh? When exams are over, you can go to places like Pandarpur, sit in the uh, bank of uh, Chandrabhaga, that is a very beautiful, airy place. You can have three-hour Bhagavatam studies, study circle, sections of Bhagavatam you can take. Huh? Very, very sweet sections are there. So, verse by verse you go and you discuss. They are all very learned people, the brahmacharis here. So, uh, then you feel consciousness soaked in Bhagavatam. That one. So, the inmates care is definitely important. The prasadam for the inmates and the sleep. You know, sleep is very important. As you said, six hours of sleep is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, prasadam, good prasad, good quality prasad. Prabhupada says, if prasadam is very good, there will be no complaint, Prabhupada says. <laughs> Because prasadam is most vital. Hmm? That should be a very nicely cooked prasad. And, uh, nicely cooked prasad doesn't mean you give junk food, huh? you know, yeah, which cannot digest. Huh? Sometimes people bombard you with uh, too opulent food also. So the whole idea is it should be nutritious, it should be tasty, it should be hot, uh, it should be served on time. And you are happy with the prasad, you are happy with sleep, they are happy with the study time. From the beginning of the semester they study. Uh, and they attend the morning program and they, uh, the Shravanam Kirtanam is nourishing them. So when you are all balanced in mind, happy, and whatever preaching you can do, you try to do. Uh, be, like I know that the world is a very challenging place to preach nowadays. Boys, boys are very bad. But at the same time, um, by, we have to pray to Krishna, please send us the sincere souls uh, so that we can cultivate them. There are definitely boys. Yesterday, I was in ba Balaji temple. I was coming out. And boys wearing beautiful tilak with one bindi here, you know. Almost six of them. They were coming out and they were all talking to each other. So I met them and uh, had a small talk about, uh, uh, you know, healthy habits for a happy life. I spoke on the topic a few minutes and walking with them back. Then I asked them, they are all from MMCOE college. And the most amazing thing, they are all roommates, all six of them. Huh? And immediately I called for Kadamakanan Prabhu. Uh, they came and then Kadamakan Prabhu talked to them in Marathi. They were very happy. They are all from different parts of Maharashtra. Uh, but one of the boys, when I, after I finished my topic, he said, uh, Sir, what you said is perfectly true. In our life, the best gift we can get is to get good friends. Uh, and he said, uh, all my friends, these boys, I got them. Although we are all from different parts of Maharashtra, we, we joined and we could take a room together. Uh, we are all staying together. Uh, and therefore, we come time to time here to this temple for darshan, we come. I asked, do you know anybody? They didn't know anybody. Hmm? And I put them in touch with Kanamakan Prabhu. Now, Kanamakan Prabhu recently started a center in MMCOE. Hmm? Yeah, and some of these boys become serious devotees. It will be such a good help. 
because they are all friends also and staying in the same room. Imagine one program is started for them, they will all become nice devotees. Huh? So, in this way, uh, you may, the purpose of telling this example is if you can locate boys like this, huh? boys who are looking for good habits, you know, who are already pious, you know, some of them are bearing Varkari Tilak and all that, you know. So, they are already good souls and those boys are very clear, they don't want to get into man, woman, janjat also. Huh? And they don't drink, they don't smoke, they, many of them lead, lead clean lives. You have to just spot the right people. Sometimes the one-time program doesn't spot such people. One-time program we do and ask for device uh, registration. You know, we don't necessarily get such people. Probably, you know, carrying pocket books or something and going room to room, you know, and then identifying the boy. I personally did that when I went to CYP. I would sell these pocket books like practical tips to mind control, auto mind control, and all the, go room to room. Indian boys are a little stingy to spend money, you know, so I would sell these books in 5 rupees only, you know. 5 rupees, they don't mind, okay, 5 rupees, they give. And if a boy is spending 5 rupees and buying, he's a good boy, you know, down, you know. And a boy is asking question, is even more good, put uh, two stars, right now. And, uh, and you ask a boy, can you come for a weekly program? He says, yes, then three star. And a boy actually came for the weekly program, four star. <laughs> you know? The boy started chanting, five star. Huh? So then you collect all the five star boys. Huh? And they are the ones who will become inmates later on because they are serious about you, correct now? So now, uh, how do we answer all these questions? Now only six questions I have answered now. Hmm? Now there are how many? 26 questions I think. Huh? Uh, how many? Okay. My Lord! So, we will, 43 uh, questions. We will, uh, I mean, your next visit maybe in, uh, next month we will plan one more day. Let okay. By the time exam will be over also for that? No, now they don't. They have exams in May. Okay. So next year, next year, when you come back from Hyderabad, yeah. so we'll reserve the... I'll just fix okay. the date now itself. Yes. What is this month now? March? Yes. Yes, right. Okay. Okay. This is March, yeah. Okay, let us put the April. April. Oh, okay, I mean, I lead, sir. I think that is the only time in, I'm in Pune, I think. But I lead starts at 11 only, I think. Huh? Yes, sir. 11 only. I can come in the morning, I think. Which morning you want me to come? A any day, for you. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, all right, Tuesday, Wednesday? Yes. I can put Tuesday. No. Nothing is. So, there. April 2nd. Is it all right for all of you? Huh? Yes. We will continue where we left. Yes. Question answer. Okay. Sir so, Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Prabhupada ki. Yeah. 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 Hare Krishna. So, I'm extremely thankful to Roji. Actually, uh, it's been a long time for VIT because of the after Corona and there was some construction work. Pending here and devotees 